Hey, I'm Adele and I'm a trauma therapist with Naked Recovery. Um, I want to talk about the polyvagal theory in understanding the impact of tra trauma on the autonomic nervous system. Why? Because it's a really fantastic model for understanding how trauma affects us you know, physiologically within our body, how our body participates in trauma, psychologically what's happening, and then what's happening in our entire nervous system as well. And what I really like about the work of Stephen Porges and what he's done um, with this model and diagram is, is show that there's like different response layers. There's a hierarchy of how we respond depending on how dysregulated we are. It also talks about the kind of um, skills that we need to develop to be able to regulate our autonomic nervous system. So let's let's kind of look at the, the basics. So first things first, the autonomic nervous system consists of two clear branches. You have the sympathetic nervous system, which is the kind of um, nervous system of movement and fight or flight or fixing. And that's um, when our amygdala is dysregulated and says, rah, there's an alarm and we need to kind of get into action and do something. It's the nervous system of action. And then the parasympathetic nervous system is regulating our kind of bodily functions in the background. So our breathing, our blood pressure, our digestion, it's kind of like the stuff in the background. And um, with trauma, like, to, the parasympathetic nervous system has two clear branches. It's, it's got a branch when it's really cool and regulated and happy called the, the ventral vagal side of the parasympathetic nervous system. And it's got the other side, which is it's collapsed, it's freaking out, it's not okay. And that's called the dorsal vagal kind of collapse response of the parasympathetic nervous system. So in the field of trauma, what we kind of look at is um, in the hierarchy of responses is when, when we're cool, when everything's okay, you'll see in the diagram, we're in the green zone. And the green zone, you know, um, is, the, is the space where you're feeling you're safe, you're connected, you're connected either to yourself or connected to others. You can be curious, you can be open, you can solve problems, you, you're in strategic mind, you can kind of like handle things, you're feeling resilient, you're feeling capable and able to handle life. And in this particular space, you know, we'd all love to live there most of the time, but life happens, right? And sometimes when life happens, it can then activate a, a response. And that activation is, is what we call trigger. So you get triggered by something, um, some traumas hit your life or something's occurred and you're now triggered. And the trigger moves you into that kind of fight, flight, fix zone the sympathetic nervous system has now taken over and in that movement into the fight flight fix zone your your parasympathetic nervous system is starting to become a little bit more dysregulated like your blood pressure might increase you you might your mouth might get dry you you might get a nervous energy or an anxiety associated with that and um, in that kind of movement space you've got to watch your capacity and your energy. You're operating here in the sympathetic nervous system. Your adrenaline's been released. Your noradrenaline's cruising around. Your, your cortisol stress hormone is starting to rise. In this space, you've got to watch your capacity because if you don't regulate yourself, you don't resource yourself properly, your body can hit overwhelm. It can move from those places, I can handle this, I can do this, to a place of I can't. I can't deal. I am not able to handle this anymore. And that's when we flick over from I can handle this into the space of I can't handle this. And that's called the dorsal vagal side of the parasympathetic nervous system. That's the shutdown. We're collapsed in that space. So what I see with a lot of clients that I work with is the space of go, 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 collapse. And then they think the collapse is a rest, but it's not a real rest. It's a full-on collapse. In that place of collapse, our autonomic nervous system is shut down. We're frozen. And in that freeze or shutdown, sometimes we fawn. We're just like, I can't handle anymore. Just do whatever you want to do. Like, It's a survival mechanism. It's a coping mechanism. And it's go, 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 collapse. And then we pick ourselves up. We somehow resource ourselves through a survival mechanism get back out there, go, 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 collapse, 
go, 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 collapse. And when I, when that occurs over a long period of time, this is where we start to see effects of adrenal fatigue. We start to see people um, not able to kind of like get back to safety with themselves or with others. And life starts to become really unbearable. And in that constant shutdown zone of dorsal vagal, People feel helpless, they feel trapped, they feel depressed, anxious, frozen. You know, and in some cases, like even suicidal, even like um, preparing for death, like in a really kind of hopeless place. Now, how do you get out of this kind of system? How do you regulate it? So the key is to understand a concept called resourcing. And resourcing is the idea that, that somehow our organic self will find a way to um, cope or to meet needs or to, you know, get through and manage what has happened. And you either resource yourself with survival resources, which are the resources that enable you to stay in that kind of sympathetic nervous system and to keep the ability to fight or fly away in your anxious state or to fix. And you just, you can keep there, you can stay there. It, it enables you to keep taking action and to get out of that kind of like a shutdown zone and collapse zone into a place of action. So the survival resource can keep you going. Survival resource is also designed to keep you in the ability to dissociate or to shut down. So survival resources are in that kind of yellow red zone. And a lot of people that have experienced compound trauma, or long term trauma live there. They live in go, 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 collapse, go, 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 collapse. And it's the long-term effect of that that makes us depressed, suppressed, um, you know, just feeling hopeless, shut down, um, helpless. It's a really kind of, it's a horrible place to be in. And the only way out is you've got to distinguish your survival resources and understand, okay, these are my mechanisms. This is how I collapse and shut down. This is how I get myself into action again. And what needs are those survival resources trying to meet? And to stop shaming your survival resources, but just to get, okay, I'm drinking too much, or I'm taking drugs, or I'm, you know, um, work, I'm overworking, or I'm like becoming an ultramarathon runner because I'm just running, running, running through all the things, but I'm not actually helping myself. This mechanism of surviving is actually acting like a short term emotion avoidance tactic. I'm not actually dealing with what's really going on here. And when you can recognize that, you can tell and see that your resourcing mechanism is not helping. And thereby, you can start to learn about growth resources. So growth resources are the resources that can help with the down regulation through the cycle, through the dorsal vagal, through the sympathetic nervous system, back down into the ventral vagal side of the parasympathetic nervous system, the place of safety, the place of openness, calmness, connection, that place right that's a function of gross resources so one of the most crucial things that you must if you're a trauma therapist and you're not doing this or you're in therapy for trauma and your therapist is not teaching you about resourcing and stabilizing get out like that is a disaster you don't want to be scratching around in your past or talking about like traumatic stuff without understanding your mechanism for resourcing yourself Trauma therapy is, is, a, is a healing is a learning journey. You've got to learn the steps and the techniques for how to regulate yourself. Self-regulation is about understanding how you resource yourself and, and having a mechanism where you install more growth resources so that you're able to ground, stabilize and settle yourself, regulate your emotions so that we can actually then start doing the processing work. So the process of trauma therapy Stage one is the stabilization mechanism. It's getting your mechanism back down into the green zone. By being in the green zone and being able to do that, you increase your window of tolerance when we actually do the work. So when we're doing the processing work, by having this increased window of tolerance, you can then deal with subject matter that is a little bit more spiky. And even then, kind of trauma therapy that we do in our company is not we're not reliving the trauma we're not going back through all the terrible things what we're interested in are the triggers we're interested in the tentacle from the base trauma all the way into the present moment examining that 
and looking at well, what you survived, what you went through, but what is still incomplete. And looking at that and looking at what needs need to get met and tackling it that way. So this is how the polyvagal theory kind of explains the understanding of, of trauma. But if you find yourself you're kind of constantly in this yellow and red zone, you're probably suffering from unprocessed trauma or complex PTSD or compound trauma that's been ignored. And, you know, if you identify yourself in this diagram, it's, it's useful for you to take stock and maybe take some time out to process what's happened to you. Because the, the whole nervous system, the whole body participates in the, in the trauma cycle. And it can be very, very damaging long term. It can lead to diseases, um, mental health challenges long term. So, you know, invest some time, energy and attention on yourself and take a look at this. Um, it's a very effective theory, but mainly its purpose is in um, working out the steps of how you can resource yourself better to get over what's happened to you. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Cheers.